language, August 31st. So today we are talking about combining subjects to have a compound subject. If you look up here at the board, I'm going to slide the board up. In a little bit I'll have to move it back so you can see the bottom of it. But Lewis explored the Northwest Territory. <coughs> That's one sentence. Clark explored the Northwest Territory. In our first sentence, what is our verb? Our verb is explore. And let's take it a bit further and ask, what is our, our um, predicate part of the sentence? Our predicate part of the sentence is explore the Northwest Territory. Just our verb is explore, but the whole predicate part of the sentence is explore the Northwest Territory. Who or what explored the Northwest Territory? Well, Lewis did. So Lewis is our subject. Look at the next sentence. Clark, so Lewis explored the Northwest Territory. Our next sentence says Clark explored the Northwest Territory. So what is our verb in this sentence? Our verb is explored again. And what's our whole predicate? The whole predicate of the sentence? Explored the Northwest Territory. So if we were writing this, the predicate part of our sentence is exactly the same, right? So we could put Lewis and Clark in one sentence and then use our predicate, explored the Northwest Territory. So it would look just like this. Lewis and Clark explored the North West, oops, I try to write too fast and I get messy. Oh, kind of like y'all sometimes, huh? Explored the Northwest Territory. So our verb is explored. Who or what explored? Lewis and Clark. So we just, not our and, just Lewis and Clark. So we just, com, or we just combined these sentences to make a compound subject. Lewis and Clark explored the Northwest Territory. That, that sounds much smoother if you were reading it or writing. Either way, it would be much smoother just to combine those subjects and have a compound subject. A compound subject is just a subject that is combined with a um, connection word and a conjoining word, okay? It, you could say, let's say there was another person involved, Randall. He, there wasn't, but let's just say there was. We could say Lewis, Clark, and Randall. Not the truth, but we could say that. Explored the Northwest Territory. Then you would have who explored? Lewis, Clark, and Randall. So you could have as many subjects um, as there is in a compound subject. It just has to be more than one. And they do have to be combined or connected with a joining word, okay? So let's look, up, let's look at um, page... 41 in your books. Now, some of you turned this page in, okay? So, if you turn this page in and it's not in your book, go, and guys, whenever there's a, there's work on the other side, you can always wait to turn that page in till the next week. I will not count off for that because I realize you have to have your paper to do your work, okay? Now, those of you who are coming to school the next day, you need to have it ready to go, okay? But if you turned your paper in, this is what was on the bottom of page 41. So what you're supposed to do is take these two choppy sentences and combine them into one smooth sentence with a compound subject. Scott painted the porch. Tim painted the porch. So to make that one smooth subject, our verb and our, our predicate part of the sentence is painted the porch in the first one and painted the porch in the second one. So we can combine that sentence Scott and Tim painted the porch. So if you did turn your paper in, get out a clean sheet of paper, language, name, and date, and put page 41 at the top. And you can turn this in with your, with your um, packet on Friday or if you're A day, B day, whatever, just, just get it to me the next day you're in school. So you will need to rewrite this properly. Scott and Tim painted the porch. Now notice up here, when I wrote my and, there is no comma. This is not a comma but, comma and, comma or, comma nor, comma for, comma yet. Because we are not combining sentences 
We are combining subjects. So there is no comma. Lewis and Clark. There will be no comma. Scott and Tim painted the porch. I still am seeing um, my fifth graders, some of you writing sentences without capital letters and without punctuation. No, 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 no. You are too old for that. Your sentences should automatically be capitalized and you should automatically have punctuation at the end. So if your papers are being marked, you need to get on the ball and correct that for me. Number two, the mouse ran down the hall, the cat ran down the hall. So in both of these, we have the same predicate, ran down the hall, ran down the hall. Combine those two choppy sentences into one smooth sentence with a compound subject. And then number three, Aunt Polly left the party early, Uncle Gerald left the party early. Or, or we have two um, exact complete predicates, left the party early, left the party early. Combine those um, subjects and make a smooth, long sentence. Be sure your sentences begin with a capital letter and be sure they begin with a period. You can pause the video and finish up that exercise. And guys, you know what? Hang on. I think I said page 41, but it's actually page 42 is where that was at. Okay? Page 42. All right. So look at page 43. And on page 43, we're going to underline the verb two times, underline the subject one time, and write simple in the blank if the sentence has a simple subject, and write compound if the sentence has a compound subject. Remember, the compound subject is going to be joined by and. All right, so here we go. Number one, heat, water, and air are involved in a weather forecast. So what is our verb? Our verb is are involved. And then who or what are involved? Heat, weather, and air. So is that a compound subject or a simple subject? Very good. It is right. Com it is compound, right? Compound on the line. Number two, the farmer and the airplane pilot are especially concerned with the weather. Don't let this one trick you. What's our verb? Always and forever a verb. On your verb list. And are. Very good. Are is our verb. And then who or what are? One word, pilot, okay? Pilot, R. You would see that farmer and airplane and automatically want to underline that as your subject, but you still have to ask your, ask your question with your verb. Who or what are? Not, not the farmer and airplane, but the pilot, R, okay? Um, well, they are, we have another part of the verb, are concerned. Now, guys, you know what? Ms. McDermott just has totally messed this sentence all up. Sh shake your head out of everything I just said. I'm so sorry. It's about 5.30 in the morning. I'm still trying to wake up. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Let's read our sentence again. The farmer and the airplane pilot are especially concerned with the weather. So what is our verb? Are what? They are concerned. So are concerned is our verb. Underline it twice. Who or what are concerned? Farmer and pilot. Not farmer and airplane. Farmer and pilot. Okay? So what kind of um, subject do we have? Simple or compound? We have a compound subject. Very good job. All right. And I'm so sorry about that, guys. Number three. Regular weather forecasts are made by the National Weather Service. What is our verb in this sentence? are made, very good, and who or what are made? Forecast, the word is just forecast. Forecast is our noun. Simple or compound? It is simple, very good job. Number four, meteorologists specialize in the study of weather. What is our verb? Something we can stand up and do? Specialize, very good. And who or what specialize? Meteorologist, very good, that is our subject. And is, is that a simple subject or compound subject? Simple, very good. Number five, weather stations, satellites, airplanes, and ships at sea provide information for the meteorologist. So what is our verb in this sentence? You can stand up and do it. Provide, very good. And who or what provide? There's a lot of subjects in this one. Weather stations, satellites, airplanes, ships. 
all of those are our subjects. So obviously, is this simple or compound? It is compound. Very good. Um, number six, weather reports are usually sent out every six hours. So on this one, we have a verb phrase. We have a word that's always and forever a verb. It's on our verb list. And we have something we can stand up and do. So what would that be? Are sent is our verb. Who or what are sent? One word. Reports are sent. So reports is our subject. And is that simple or compound? Simple. Very good. Number seven, temperature and pressure affect wind currents. What is our verb? Something you can stand up and do. There's no helping verbs in this, in this sentence. Affect is our verb. Very good. Underline it twice. Who or what affect? Temperature, pressure. So temperature, pressure are your subjects. Underline those ones. And is that a simple subject or a compound subject? It is simple. I'm sorry. It is compound. Very good. Number eight. During the gale force winds, trees may be uprooted have a verb phrase here we have two helping verbs and then we have something that you can stand up and do may be uprooted is our verb phrase and who or what may be uprooted trees very good trees is our subject and is that simple or compound it is simple good job number nine oh, I have trouble saying this word um Anometers, I think is how you say. Anometers and weather vanes measure the wind's speed and direction. So our verb here is something you can stand up and do. So what is it? Measures. And who or what measures? Anometers, weather vanes. Okay, so that is our subject. Underline your subject one time. And is that simple or compound? It is compound. Great job. And number 10, perhaps your teacher and class can build an anometer. Well, that's interesting. Um, so what is our verb? It's a verb phrase. We have a helping verb, a word that's on our list, and something we can stand up and do. Can build is our verb. And who or what can build? Teacher, class is our subject. Underline them one time. And is that simple or compound? Very good. That is a simple subject. I mean, a compound subject. It's not simple. A compound subject. Um, look at thing C. Underline the verb two times. Underline the subjects one time. Look for compound subjects and verbs. So number one, many poems have been written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. What is our verb phrase? There are two words that are on our verb list and one word of something you can stand up and do. Have been written. Underline it twice. Who or what have been written? Poems. Underline it once. That is our subject. This poet and father tells of the children's hour. What is our verb in this sentence? One word. You can stand up and do it. Tells. And who or what tells? Poet, father. We have a compound subject. Poet, father. Number three. Three daughters are plotting and planning a surprise. So we have three words. We have a verb phrase, and then we have a verb by itself. And our verb, and our verb phrase, it's a word that's on our verb list, plus something you can stand up and do. Are plotting, planning is our verb. Underline it twice. Are plotting, planning. And who or what are plotting, planning? Daughters. Daughters is our subject. Underline it once. Soft voices and the patter of little feet signal their approach. One word in here. That's a verb. Something you can stand up and do. Find it. Look for it. Think about it. Signal. You can stand up and signal. That is our verb. Underline it twice. Who or what signal? Voices. Patter. Voices. Patter is our subject. Um, number five, Grave Alice, Laughing Allegra, and Edith with golden hair run to their father. What is our verb in that sentence? One word and you can stand up and do it. Hopefully you do it every day. Hopefully you're not just sitting 
in front of Fortnite or Netflix all day long. What is it? Run. Very good. Our verb is run. Underline it twice. And who or what run? Three words. Alice, Allegra, Edith. Those are our subjects. Compound subject. The girls climb on his chair and surround him. You have a compound verb. There are two words in here that you can stand up and do. Find them. Climb, surround is our compound verb. And who are what? Climb, surround. Girls. Girls is our subject. Number seven, their kisses and hugs. Hold him fast. So what is our verb? This is something we can do, stand up and do. Holds, very good. Who or what holds? Kisses, hugs is our subject. Underline it once. That is a, our compound subject. The girls, however, are no match for their father. We have a word in here that is on our verb list. It's the only word in the subject, or the only verb in the sentence. If you have not learned your verb list, then you are very far behind. You need to go to page 10 in your book or go to the back of your book if page 10 is not in there and find your verb list and learn them. It is of the most importance. So what is our word in there that's on our verb list? Are. Who are what are? Girls. Girls is our subject. Girls should be underlined once and are twice. Soon the blue-eyed bandits are wrapped in, the, in big arms and captured. We have a compound verb. The first one is a verb phrase. The second one is just by itself, something you stand up and do. So are wrapped, captured is our verb. Are wrapped, captured, underline it twice. And who are what are wrapped, captured? One word, bandits. Very good, bandits is our subject. These children shall never escape from the tower of their father's heart. So we have a verb phrase here, a word that's always and forever a verb. We don't see this word often, but it, we, it is a verb and it is on our list. So it's a helping verb and then something you can stand up and do. Shall escape is our verb, underline it twice. And who or what shall escape? Children. Children is our subject, underline it once. So I'm hoping that everyone really did watch the video for this today because we did this whole entire page together. So that is very beneficial for you if you have watched your video. If you haven't, shame on you, and you won't even be here to see, hear me say that. So anyways, this is called preaching to the choir. That's what that's called. All right guys, so great job. I do need to talk to you about one more thing. On your language, um, on your Google Classroom, you will see that it says to read chapter one of Rosa, and then it says write a summary. Ah! a summary what in the world so a summary it's just a more grown up bigger grade way to say an essay or to write um, some sentences about what you read so after we finish reading this book which I think we will be done next Friday I think we finish this book you will be writing a book report I know this book from cover to cover so when you write your book report, I will know if you have read this book or not. I will know if you've just found pages to copy things off of, which we cannot do. When we write our summary, we have to write things in our own words. So after you read chapter one, you're going to get out a clean sheet of paper. And at the top, I just want you to write Rosa. And I want you to write your name and date. And then I want you to skip a line and write chapter one. And under chapter one, you are going, after you read it, you are going to write anywhere from three to five sentences telling me about what chapter one was about. Now, I say telling me about it, but really, you're making notes for yourself for when you write your book report, okay? Um, so write three to five sentences telling um, what chapter one was about. And then Tuesday, when you read chapter two, you'll just go down on your paper after your last sentence, and you'll write chapter two. And then you'll write three to five more sentences about what happened on chapter two. And you'll just keep all these papers together until you finish the book. And then you're going to have all of that information to write your book report. Now, guys, I'm really not going to grade um, your, your notes or your summaries, per se. 
I am going to have you turn them in to me with your book report, and it will, so I am going to grade it, I guess, it will count as part of your grade towards your book report. So probably what's going to happen is your summary will count as a quiz grade, and then your book report will count as a test grade, and this will be in language, okay? So you're going to want to make sure that you do your summaries, and then you have all that information when it comes time to write your book report, you're going to knock it out in a minute. I mean, just a matter of time. Um, so that is what that is about. So this is not an option. It will be a test grade and a quiz grade when it's all done. So you want to do your best. And some of you need some good test grades and some good quiz grades from those grades that you got zeros on for not doing work. So you need to take advantage of this. This is a good book. It's a fun read. It's a good read. Um, so you need to take advantage and, and get you an easy two 100s right here on a test and a quiz grade to go in your grade book. All right. So that is how Rosa is going to work, and you guys do a great job, and enjoy reading Rosa. It's a good book.